Well, good day, everyone, and welcome to um, Microsoft Teams for Remote Learning. Um, my name is Troy Waller. I'm from Microsoft. I am a learning delivery specialist, which is just a fancy way of saying I'm an ex-teacher who now works for Microsoft. So this is our special CSER workshop around remote learning for teams. It's actually the first in a number of sessions that we're actually running for you guys. Um, so I really hope that you can spread the word and let others know that these workshops are, um, are coming specifically for you. The other thing about them is that they are being recorded and we will make the, the recordings as well as the slides available to you um, so that you can steer uh, other members of your school uh, back to this stuff. So I really hope that we can get a bit of a groundswell around uh, what we can do with Teams for remote access and remote learning for our students and uh, we can get the word out there because it's um, it's quite important, obviously, that we don't want to make sure, sorry, that we want to make sure that none of our kids fall through the cracks um, and that, you know, the bulk of our class, if not all our class, are actually being reached and, um, you know, have, have their hand held remotely through this time with their learning. All right, so anyway, enough about that. I'm going to take you guys on a little bit of a journey. Uh, first thing I want to draw your attention to is our Microsoft Remote Learning landing page, our website. It's aka.ms forward slash Microsoft Remote Learning. That is the start page for you. Everything to do with Microsoft um, Remote Learning, everything to do with making sure that you're reaching your students from a teacher level, but there's also a lot of information there for IT professionals in the education space. All over, all over the shop. There's some really, really good stuff happening in there. So I do uh, recommend that you pop in and check that out. All right. So what we're going to do today is we're going to we're going to take you through uh, Microsoft 365 and Teams. I'm going to explain to you a little bit about how this all works and how you access it. Some of this may not be brand new to you, um, but nevertheless, I'm going to tell you all about it anyway. We're going to do a bit of a Teams overview. We're going to go. Uh, explore teams and what it looks like and how it works. Uh, then we're going to talk about setting up your class team. We're going to go through the, the good approach for online meetings, and then I'm going to steer you to some resources to help you get started. Again, there's that website again, aka.ms forward slash Microsoft Remote Learning. Okay, so the start place for your Office 365 experience, which includes teams, is office.com, right? So www.office.com. When you sign into office.com, you're going to come to uh, a sign in screen, which is going to ask you for your information. And that's usually just your uh, work, or, uh, school email address, and password, all right? And then that will bring you into Office 365. And then what you can do from there is you can click on this Teams button over here, this little Teams button over here, and you can download Teams. Um, or open it up in the browser, and there's also ways to download the, the client as well, but that's how you get into Teams, all right? So having signed in, you should get started. So the thing about Teams is as I've got there, it's got all the building blocks for remote learning, all right? So we're not just looking at Teams, but we're looking at Teams as part of the Office 365 ecosystem. So it's an integration of Teams with all these other Office apps that you've got. So you can see up there at the top, I've got course materials and management, which is handled very much by Teams, but also through OneNote. And we're going to have another uh, OneNote workshop coming up in the future. So I'll take you through all that. And we'll have a little bit of a look today as well. But I think the key that you know a lot of you are here for is looking at things like video content over here, but also our lesson streaming and our recording of those lessons. And that's really Teams um, in its relationship to Microsoft Stream, which is your video recording and video housing platform inside Office 365. Um, in terms of assessments and assignments, well, we're going to uh, look, of course, at what happens in right across Office 365, but also, of course, in Teams. And then the Teams integration with OneNote around assignments is really quite cool as well. We've got a, uh, another workshop on inclusive learning coming up for, for you. Uh, it's, it's in a couple of weeks. 
away the way that we've sort of spaced it out but um, definitely the team's integration with things like immersive reader and office lens is really key as well and then um, there's the organizational side so using um, outlook for your for your calendar and, and planning etc um, and that's integration with teams there's some really good analytics that have been built into teams um, we have uh, power bi integration and also uh, my analytics but there's an insights app as well which i'm going to take you through and show you that today. The other thing I'm going to do is every once in a while I will stop and field questions and if you've got any questions that are related to, to what we've done so far we'll, we'll definitely answer those and then we'll have a Q&A time at the end as well. Okay so one hub everything connected so the first thing that we see when we look at teams is definitely our calls and that's not just audio calls but also video calls and that's what we're going to use to stream our lessons and connect with our students. We've got uh, the chat, okay? So depending on, where, on what your school has adopted in terms of policies around the chat, there's ability for teachers to talk to students and students to talk to students. But some schools have decided, you know, in terms of um, child protection, et cetera, that those, those features are going to be disabled, but your school may in fact have those still switched on. Um, and then of course there's the teams themselves and that's gonna make some uh, more sense in a moment if you're new to Teams, but there is an environment that we can bring everybody into that we call a Microsoft team. Um, the other thing too is the integration with Office 365. That is, you can see your favorites there, Word, PowerPoint, Outlook, Excel, uh, even OneNote have a really strong integration into Teams. But then we also have an integration of third party apps. So apps that uh, you know you may be using, things like uh, Wikipedia, Kahoot, YouTube, Wakelet, Flipgrid, et cetera, can all be brought into your Teams experience as well. So it's not just your Office 365 apps, but it's external apps as well. And then of course, as I said before, we've got the ability to have uh, our assignments, whether they're connected to OneNote or whether they're connected to, um, uh, to Word or PowerPoint, et cetera, we can bring those in as an assignment uh, inside a team. All right, so let's talk first about creating collaborative classrooms. So OneNote Close Class Notebook um, is, is built into every class team and it allows teachers to organize their interactive lessons and deliver personalized learning right from inside Teams. So OneNote is part of Teams and OneNote is part of your class team. The other thing too is we want to empower student voice. So we've got rich conversations, video and content and that persistent experience in Teams makes learning more visible to the entire class with text, video and voice using integrations like Microsoft Stream, which we will explore a little bit later. Um, you can easily create and share content with embedded Office 365 apps and files, which is what I talked about a moment ago. So you can bring the apps that you know and love into that classroom experience, so you can quickly access Office 365 apps um, and also external apps. But the cool thing about this as well is we have class avatars and emojis and stickers that allow teachers to harness natural behaviors for a fun and fluid learning experience. So the thing about Office, excuse me, the thing about Teams is Teams is free and it provides a consistent experience right across your devices. So whether you're coming in on a desktop machine, whether that is a, a PC, whether that is um, a Mac or an, an, a Mac OS device, you can download the client, the, the app, the program and you can be running it from your machine. Um, the other thing is we do have dedicated apps for tablet devices, whether it's an Android or a, a, an Apple tablet device, we have dedicated apps for those and also for your phones. So whether you're on an iPhone or whether you're on an Android platform, you can actually download the app and be using that in there as well. Now, in terms of browsers, um, we are definitely right across um, the Microsoft Edge browser, the uh, Chrome browser, and also Safari. And we also work really quite well on Firefox as well. So whether you've got a, a dedicated app built into one of these devices or whether you're just going to use the browser, you're going to have a fairly seamless experience. But I do want to stress um, through the apps is where you're going to have the fastest experience and especially over the, on your desktop machine. All right, there is a download link there as well. So if you want to get Teams, um, you can do it through through the browser, 
um, but it's aka.ms forward slash get teams. And remember, we will make these slides available to you. All right, so I think what I'll do is I'll just stop there. I'm going to come back to um, questions. I'm just going to see if there have been any questions so far. Anna, have, has anyone thrown any questions our way? Um, no, not so far. OK, so there is a, um, a Q&A button. If you um, hover your mouse over the screen, you'll actually see the Q&A button sitting there. So go ahead and um, throw any questions that you have for us through that. All right, no worries. Let's keep going then. So Teams approaches remote learning um, through a couple of ways. And the first thing we need to do is we need to look at what we're going to set up before we start our, our remote learning um, engagement with our students. So we want to create a class team. We want to schedule your online class or lecture, and then we also want to prepare our device. Um, and then during this engagement, we want to present our content to students. We want to record our lessons for later viewing and we want to manage our conversations and questions. And then after we want to be able to access our lesson recordings. We want to view responses to the conversations and then we want to continue to chat and engage with our students and collaborate on documents and learning materials. So Teams supports your lessons by bringing everything the class needs for a meeting into the one place. And it delivers a, a unique end to end experience that brings the human element of face to face interaction while helping students stay focused before, during and after the lesson. So before the lesson, we want to ensure the lesson is productive. We want to make sure the students can prepare ahead of time so they can review previous content and engagements and collaborate on documents. And then during that lecture we, or during that engagement, um, we want to make sure that we as teachers use a variety of features that help focus attention, drive engagement and foster inclusion, such as high fidelity audio and video, live captions and translations, co-authoring of apps, digital whiteboards, etc. And then after the lesson, we want to make sure that all that content, the recording, the chat, the notes, the digital whiteboard, the files, they're all saved somewhere right inside teams in a persistent conversation that helps us to continue the discussion right so nothing gets lost in the cracks and hopefully none of our students especially so what we're going to do now is i'm going to talk to you about the before stage so we're going to create a class team then we're going to schedule your online class or lecture and then we're going to prepare your device so creating our virtual class space right so we need to create a class team so Microsoft Teams can support up to 5,000 members of a team, all right? So 5,000 members at one time can be a part of that team, but that doesn't mean that we can engage all 5,000 at once. So there's a few caveats. Um, about the class team, when we create a class team, students cannot leave. Um, it is invite only, so it's hidden from others, and the class materials folder is read only. But this is what I was saying before about whilst, yes, we have, can have 5,000 in at once, if we're going to use assignments and the OneNote class notebook, then we can only um, reach a maximum of 200 students at a time. So in terms of using everything that we're wanting to access through Teams, really think about Teams as having about a 200 student maximum per team. Now, for most of you, you've got somewhere between 20 and 35 students in your class, so that's just not going to be an issue at all. But I just want to stress that while we can have 5,000 members, we can really only use some of these features to engage about 200. And when we're thinking about a university, um, which is what you know Teams is used for as well, well, that becomes quite, you know, quite relevant to them. Um, so we are going to increase those numbers in the future. There are four types of teams. You can see that on the on the page there. We have what's called a class team. So a class team will activate the assignments features. It will also create a OneNote class notebook. But we also have a professional learning community team, which you can set up, um, which creates a OneNote notebook uh, built around uh, a PLC or a model of a PLC. We have a staff team, which as it says there is all about um, collaborating and working together as staff. And then we've got what's called another team. And the other team is really just to, to be used in a, you know, in any way you want. But the real the real difference is with another team is that it doesn't create a OneNote notebook and it doesn't activate the assignment features. So once you get past working with a class, I actually find that that other 
uh, notebook is probably going to be one that you're going to be really wanting to uh, to explore as well. Um, and we will have a workshop specifically or a webinar specifically around staff collaboration at some time in the future too. All right, so when we're adding students to our class, we want to um, create a team to bring the students together. So there are self-managed ways that we can add students. We have an invite link which we can send the students out. They click on that and they come into the team. We can share a join code with them. That is, we can uh, email them a code. They come into the team, they enter their code and they're automatically a member. Um, you can also add a distribution group. So if you have a, a, an Office 365 group that already exists, you can actually um, just add that entire group and all the students will come in. And you can also add students individually. So you can sit there adding them by email address or by name, and we'll have a look, little bit, bit of a look at that when we open up Teams. Um, in terms of IT setup, which is what we want, you know, what we're recommending for the long term, is that class teams and membership can be automated, okay, by the IT department using student information system data, which means that you as a teacher won't necessarily have to access um, or, or add the class yourself, but that's something that needs to be set up by them. So having a look at this quick start guide and remembering I'm going to make these slides available to you. Um, I just want you to see some of the things that we can do inside Teams. All right, so we've got the ability to add apps. Um, we can find our own personal apps. We can organize our teams. We can navigate through teams through things like um, the activity tab, which we'll have a look at all these later. Um, but we can, you know, you can see the assignment tabs and a calendar app, etc., in there as well. Um, you can have chats, so private chats away from everybody else. That all happens in here. You've got a command box up here. A lot of people miss that when they first jump into Teams, but you can actually search for things. And once you learn some of those commands, it makes it really quite easy to to find things. Your profile settings sit over here, so setting your notifications, changing your picture, your um, screen presentation, all that kind of thing. This is where we join a team, this is how we manage teams, and we can view teams as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you in, I'm going to show you um, what it looks like inside teams, I'm going to take you through some of the basics of teams, and I'm also going to show you how to set up that class notebook. So why don't we do that now? Why don't we jump into Teams? So, excuse me, I'm going to take you in. So this is the Office 365 start page. So again, it's office.com. And then all you need to do when you come in here after you've signed in is you can click on Teams. All right, so I've already opened up Teams and this is what it looks like. There's two ways you can view your Teams. You can view them as a tile like this, as tiles, or you can also view them as a list. OK, so when you have a list of your teams, all your teams will actually sit down the side like this. All right. Now, for what it's worth, I actually find it's much nicer for the students to actually be living. Let me come back into my settings here to actually be living in the grid or the tile view. So I do suggest that you um, do that as well. Another thing is when you're in the in the settings area, I do suggest that you change your um, language to English Australia. Um, so that's something to keep it, keep an eye on and you can set your theme whether you want it to be um, light or dark mode. All right. Oh, I'm not going to restart that because we're in the middle of a, a live uh, live presentation here. All right. So this, these are my teams, right? These are ones that have already been created, but I want to show you how we would create a team. All right. So when we create a team, we click here on join or create team. And you can see what happens is these are public teams. So these people have actually created their teams as public, which means anybody can see them um, and possibly join them. When you create a team, the default is private, so it won't appear for everybody else. But here you can see the join team with a code. And so this is where you would, when, when you have a team, you would create a code, and I'll show you how to do that a little bit later. And you could publish that to your students. And when they click on that create or join, they would enter their code and bang, they're already into the team, which is really quite handy. All right, but I'm going to take this in. I'm going to create a team. Now here you can see here are my four team types. All right, so these are um, for education people, uh, education tenants, education office 365 spaces. Um, everybody out in there in the, in the corporate world, they only get one kind of team. We're lucky we get four. Now we're looking at setting this up for our students. So let's go into a class team. What are we going to call the team? Now, I just want to stop here and remind you that it's really important that you give your team the right name, right? And it's what we um, it's what we call a naming convention. If I was to call this something like, let's say I'm, 
um, teaching a grade six team and I just call it 6T, well, that's all well and good, but what am I going to call my team next year or next term or whatever um, if I'm creating new teams? So you really need to think about the governance. So you might actually have a, um, a school name. So you, yours might be um, St. John's. And then you might put in the, the year. OK, and then the. Let's call it uh, actually, let's make it grade four. H, OK, whatever. It, and that that's going to mean something to you. All right. So just think about your naming conventions. Try and put the year in somewhere. Try and put the school name or you may have a school code, for example. So you may not put in 2020. Your school may have a code that's something like five, six, seven. Uh, eight or something like that, all right? Whatever you want to call it, but do think about your naming conventions. Um, you can create the team from an existing team if you've got one already, which is a template, so it'll bring all those settings and everything across, but we're going to do this from a brand new one. And you can see now that the team is actually being whipped up. Now, here's where we could add our students, right? So as I start to look for my students, and I can look for them by name, all right, so there's there's one of my students there is Travis Smith, so I could add Travis and then I'm going to look for another one of my students, which is Amanda, and I can add her like that. Now, the problem with doing this now is when I click add and the team is created, those students are going to get an invitation to the team and I haven't finished setting it up yet. All right, so just keep that in mind. Um, so I'm actually going to remove those. Um, you can add teachers as well at this point. Um, but you can also add them later on if you want. So I'm not adding anyone, so I'm just going to skip that for now. And there we go. There's my team. OK, so my team is is, is whipped up, ready to go. Um, something to think about is that you can click on these buttons like upload class materials. You can also access your class notebook, etc. cetera. Um, but rather than do that, I'm actually going to take you into one. Here's my... Um, cooking show specialty, one that I have promote, uh, create, sorry, one that I prepared earlier. So welcome to Teams and welcome to the 2020 6G team. OK, so um, I can change my icon here, all right, which makes it a little bit of fun. You've got all these different avatars that you can come in and look for specifically. Um, I'm going to leave that one as it is for now, but you can change your your avatar like that. Now, We've got these tabs down the side here. OK, we've got channels living under here and then we've got all these tabs across the top as well. So let's go through some of those as we as we get going. The first thing is we've got the activity tab. OK, so the activity tab, those of you that are in um, social media, whether that's Facebook or Twitter or something like that, will know the notifications tab that you're used to. Now, when I click on my notifications tab or my activity feed, it's going to show me all the things that are relevant to me, OK, and even my new notifications. All right. So as I click on these, it will actually take me inside that team. So this is right across my teams and all the notifications that are relevant to me. But I'm going to come back to my team here. Now, I've also got a chat bar here. So my chat is my private chat away from everybody else. So just like on Facebook or some of these other social media platforms, you can have a private chat. Um, I can start new chats up here. I've got my existing chats happen down here, which is nice. I've got all my teams again, okay? So I can see all my teams or I can just come specifically into the team that I'm working at. Um, these are my, this is my assignments button, which is gonna show me all my assignments as a teacher or as a student right across my teams, not just in this one. Um, we've got the calendar app as well, which is where I will schedule my uh, my calls and I will see all my teams meetings, etc. inside there and, it, and it, out, uh, it connects really nicely with Outlook. Um, I've got my calls button as well. So if you've got uh, if you've got telephony set up, you can make phone calls through teams. And I've also got my files tab here, which is where I can access the files on my computer and my own personal OneDrive files as well. So those are those tabs there. OK, now we see here in the team, I've got these things called channels. OK, now every team is going to have a general channel. You can't change it or rename it, but there are numerous other channels that you can create as well. So you can see I've created because this is 6G. They've got their Chinese language course. They've got their, their literacy or their English. They've got their maths. They've got their science. I've created channels for those. 
All right, now when I come into, let's go into the Chinese channel, for example, we can see that there is posts and post is where we have our conversations area, right? So this is in every channel. Um, and But those, those conversations are only specific to that channel, which is in this case, Chinese. And you can see that I can click on my formatting here and I can add um, a conversation here. So I could say, hi everyone. All right, and then I click send over here and then that's going to appear in here. Now, my students can reply to me and we can be having conversations that everybody can see. And inside there, I've got the ability to format that, right? So I've got some basic formatting tools like, you know, bold, italic, underlined. I can, um, uh, I've got some paragraphing tools. Um, I can throw in links and, and other things as well. Um, I can set the permissions on that. Do I want everyone to be able to reply or is it just some sort of private, uh, sorry, excuse me, I can just, only moderators can reply to that chat. I can post into multiple channels as well. The other thing I can do is I can actually create an announcement. All right, so when I click on announcement, what happens is I have the ability to still do all that formatting, etc. but I can choose an illustration and make it, you know, make it interesting. So I click on this one here, for example, and I can say um, Chinese lunch provided day for our class. All right, then I can put a subhead and I can put an announcement, etc. in there, and then everybody will get a notification because this is an announcement that will actually come into there. So I might say, um, see you at 12 p.m. That's all I'm going to write in there. Forgive me for a moment. And then I click send. Okay, and now that's actually appeared in that, in that uh, channel and everyone gets that announcement. All right, so that's what's really cool about being able to play with uh, conversations. Everybody can see it um, and whether it's an announcement or just a, a normal chat. The other thing I can do is I can at mention people. All right, so if I wanted to at mention one of my, my students, I click the little at button, sorry, the at key, and then I start to type that student's name. And what's happening now is that student is actually going to get a special notification just for them up in their activity feed because I'm mentioning their name. Amanda, can you please see me at recess? Okay, now I could have done that. I could have done that as a private chat, but there may be some reason that I'm wanting to make, you know, everybody aware um, of what I'm reaching out to Amanda about, or it might be numerous students, etc. Okay, the other thing that we've got over here is we've got our files section in here and our file section is where we have we keep all our obviously keep all our files all right so you can see i've not created anything in here yet but i could i could just create a folder and we could call this week one all right so now all our chinese related week one files are in there but any way that i want to manage that just like i would with you know finder on my mac or file explorer on my pc we can set that up or whether it was like you used to once upon a time on a shared drive inside here as well i can also create new word documents excel documents powerpoint etc all coming in with the online apps which is pretty cool all right, so that's what that looks like, and, and that's the same in all the channels, but where it's a little bit different for us is up in the general channel, um, because the general channel has some other features that I want to, excuse me, that I want to share with you. All right, so we've got up here, we've got a class notebook. Okay, so those of you that know OneNote and know OneNote class notebook um, will be quite thrilled to see that we've got class notebook fully integrated into here. So when I create this team, class notebook is created. Um, all my students that I add to the team are automatically added to the class notebook. And this class notebook is now saved inside my SharePoint space, not my personal space. So it's now living inside the school space, which means that I can easily hand this on by inviting, I can add members here, whether they be teachers or students, and I could hand this whole team onto someone else and the class notebook onto someone else without having to migrate and all that kind of thing as well. So um, it's really quite cool. But those of you that know about um, class notebook, we have um, a collaboration space. Okay, so a collaboration space is where the students can work together um, and I can set permissions and, and be bumping them in and out of those spaces. And we can see here inside the collaboration space, we've got a maths, 
a literacy, a Chinese and a science, which directly reflects our channels. So when we go inside those channels, for example, if we go inside literacy and then we click on, um, excuse me, we click on notes, we can access the OneNote um, collaboration space specifically from the channel, like here. So that's the literacy, um, the literacy space inside our class notebook. So when we come back to class notebook, Again, hopefully that's going to make sense to you that when I click on the collaboration space, you can see these are all those spaces that were in a moment ago. OK, so that's where the students can work together um, and I can set permissions on those spaces as well. The content library is where I as a teacher am going to up load all my content all right so students have uh, read only access only but i as a teacher have read and write access so i can actually um, upload all my content and i know the students won't accidentally or on purpose delete those as well remember we're going to have a workshop all about class notebook coming up shortly um, then we've also got the, the, ch the student spaces, okay? So each one of these students has a space. You can see here we've got Chinese, literacy, math, science, um, and I could create more of those as well. But each one of those students has those sections. Now, what that means is for me as a teacher, I can go in and look at what my students are doing um, in real time, um, but they can't see each other. So what it means is for a student, they will see a collaboration space, a content library, and themselves. But as a teacher, I can see everyone all right so that's pretty cool as well now to create another channel i want to show you how easy that is to do i just come up here and i click on these three dots here actually i'm just going to jump back into files over here i click on my three dots over here i'm going to add channel let's make this one social studies all right or whatever you happen to call that um, i want to make sure that everybody can see that now i have two kinds of channels that i can create a standard channel access to everyone or a private channel, which means that students won't even know it exists and I have to invite them into that channel. But in this case, I want to create a standard channel because everyone needs access to social studies. And you can see that that channel is now um, appeared for us over here. All right. So there's all my channels ready to go with my students. All right. Now, the other thing that I can do is I can actually, and I want you to hold off, I'm going to take you right through assignments and grades, etc. but I want to show you how I can add tabs in here. All right, so let's go back down into Chinese. Let's add a tab. Now you can see here, I can add things like my, you know, Adobe apps, my Microsoft apps, um, and then we've got all these other third party apps as well. But in this case, what I want to do is I want to actually add a video that I want the students to be able to watch later. So what I've done is I've actually already opened this. So I just grab my my link from in there. I come back into my team. I throw my link in like that. Oh, I'm going to hit. That is a valid YouTube clip. I don't know why that's not working. That's all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search instead. So I'm going to put in Chinese lessons BBC. And I hit search and there's there's one maybe that I'm looking for. So and as a matter of fact, it is real Chinese part one. I throw that in, click save. And now that link or that tab sits across the top and the YouTube clip can be watched from inside Teams. OK, so the students don't have to go out and look for it. They can, if they want, open it into their browser and they can also maximize the screen if they want. All right, so they can be looking at that as a much bigger in a much bigger way. But there it is. That app is now living inside my Chinese channel. And at the end of that um, lesson, this may not be relevant to them anymore. That's all right. I can just remove that. Bang. And then that's no longer there for them to access or I can leave it there. It's up to me. The other thing I want to share with you, though, is if you have an LMS, maybe because this is grade six, maybe inside your um, uh, inside your team, you want to put access to your learning management system or other relevant websites. So I click on that. Um, I'm going to come up here to Compass and that's just an LMS that I've just chosen randomly. And now when I come back into my team. I pop it in here. So you might be using Schoolbox or some other LMS, but let's just say Compass LMS. And I click Save. Now what happens is it sits as a tab across the top. So anything with a web portal, 
anything at all can actually be viewed inside of Teams. All right, but maybe I've got lessons. So here I am over in my literacy channel and I've got this great adjective um, website that I want the students to be able to access from the ABC. So again, I would just grab that link. Then I come back into, I mean, make sure I'm in my literacy channel. I click here, I click website. This is my adjectives activities. There it is, paste my link in there and then I click save. And now we can see that the students are able to access those adjectives activities just from inside Teams. They don't need to go outside and be finding it for themselves. I don't have to be sending them links. It's all just sitting there waiting for them. Okay, so that's some of the cool things we can do. But remembering we could also be adding tabs across the top of Excel spreadsheets or you know Microsoft Forms or PowerPoint, etc. Another thing I wanna share with you really quickly before we move on from the tabs is we have this insights tab as well, all right? So it's very easy to find. Um, when I clicked on the plus here, um, it, it's sitting up here for me, but if you can't find it, you just start to type in the search here and you can find different, um, different apps. But in this case, we're looking for the insights one, all right? So when you click on that, um, you, can open, you can add that. And then what that does is that actually brings in a whole heap of data. Um, it, it accesses the data around your students, right? For, for their assignments, for the amount of time that they're actually spending inside Teams, um, feedback apps, et cetera, et cetera. It's really quite cool and all that can be exported to Excel. So I, um, because this is a, uh, a demo team, I haven't actually got any activity, but I, it's really very exciting, the stuff that you can do inside there. All right, so that's Teams, that's Channels, and that's tabs. I hope that you've got a lot out of that. What I might do is I might actually jump back into the um, into the chat and I might just see if we've got any questions, um, Anna, that have come up so far. Yep, uh, two questions. questions. Uh, one, one is from Lucy. Lucy. Mm -hmm. Can you Can put you students, students in small, small groups group in the in collaboration group space group in OneNote? Uh, definitely you can, yeah. Please, please um, check in with me on that on our next uh, OneNote um, webinar and I'll take you through how to do that but definitely you can you can set um, those groups in the collaboration space and you can set permissions on those groups so you can lock students in and out of those groups. Okay another question is a little bit um, it sort of deviates from the topic but uh, um, so this person is supposed to do another uh, workshop next week uh, this later this week um, and they're asking if they need to be aware of anything at all before joining. Yeah, we class. might we might hold that question. And do you want to hold that on off till the end? And we'll yeah, or the general Q and A. Yep. Yeah. Just just questions about anything that we've covered sort of up to this point. And that's it. Okay, great, awesome. All right, so let's keep going. All right, so what I want to share with you now, though, is I want to talk about the assignments, OK, because the assignments are actually one of the really key features that makes Teams amazing. Now, remember, I am going to take you in and show you all the cool video stuff that you can do later. Um, but for now, I want to show you how we set up an assignment. OK, so when we create an assignment, we come up here to our assignments tab in the general channel. Uh, we can access assignments over here, but these are going to be all our assignments right across Teams. This is just our specific assignments um, for this team. All right, so you can see here there's already two that I've set up. So when I hit on my create button, there's two kinds of assignments that I can set up. I can create a quiz using Microsoft Forms. And again, we're going to have a workshop all around using Forms, so please sign in for that. Um, the other thing we can do is we can create just a generic assignment using other tools outside of Forms. So when I click on that, you can see here, very, very easy to do. I can throw in my, my title for my assignment. I can set a category, so um, whether that's gonna be social studies or maths, or I can create categories as I go. Um, I can put in my instructions. Um, I can also add 
resources, right? So there, that's where I type my instructions, but these are the resources that I want to make available to the students, right? So I can upload something directly from my OneNote, from my personal OneDrive that I might want to make available to them. I can throw in a link to anywhere in the in the web, and these can be multiple resources. You're not just linked to one of these, um, but I can also create a template for them. So I might want to create a template for them to work in in Word or PowerPoint or Excel, and I can actually include that as well. And the other thing I can do is I can set make code assignments, right? So make code assignments, so that's our coding language. So if you're using something like um, uh, Minecraft or Microbit or something like that, you can actually set uh, make code as your kind of assignment as well. Um, the other thing I can set points, okay? So I can just determine whether this assignment is going to be 20 points, 40 points, etc. Um, I can also add a rubric. So I can upload existing rubrics or I can um, create a rubric. So I'm going to create a rubric here and just show you what it looks like. Um, I throw in a title, descriptions, and then I've got my grading criteria here. So I can have uh, numerous points that I'm going to be assessing. And then I've also got my standards right across here, you know, excellent, good, fair, poor. You can change those. All right, so if you know anything about building a rubric, you can see you can build a really good rubric which becomes available to the students, um, you know, so they can actually know what the criteria, the marking criteria is. Who do I want to assign this to? OK, so it can be this class in particular, or maybe it's going to be multiple classes, other classes that I work with. Um, do I want to assign it to all students or do I want to differentiate for individual students? Um, I've got a due date, I've got a time, and I also can determine whether that's going to be allowed for late um, late turn in or not. Now, I want to show you an assignment that I, again, using my um, cooking show uh, voice, I want to show you some one that I've created earlier. So this is an Aboriginal culture assignment. OK, it has uh, it's for social studies. It's on Adam Goods. And you can see here that this assignment has actually already been assigned to a number of students. I've got three here that have not been graded and they have not turned the assignment in. But over here, I've got one, one student has actually already completed this assignment, right? So I have a fair amount um, of uh, access in terms of data looking at the whole class, which is nice. But before I take you in and show you that, I wanna show you what the students see as well. So when the students come into this space, this is the assignment as they see it. So as I built that out, I put a, you know, a, a, um, a, a code there for myself. I've put the instructions, the, the reference materials are to another ABC website, which they can open up. And I've also created for them a template for them to actually do their assignment. All right. So you can see here that inside when they open it up, they see it's a video summary, 150 words. There's the links and then they go in and they edit the document and they start doing what they need to do. And each one of the students has their own unique template. OK, so that's what that looks like to the student. Now, for me as a teacher, though, we come back to this page in here, right? So I can set points and rubrics and all that kind of stuff. I can delete, I can update, I can cancel um, all those kind of cool features as well. All right, now I'm going to come back into assignments. And um, I'm going to look at my grades, right? So when I look at my grades, that's my grade book. It's actually going to show me all the different assignments that have been set and my students results uh, overall, which is really quite cool. But what I do want to share with you is I want to show you what that looks like. I'm going to show you the grade book. This is one that's actually built out. So you can see here, here's all my students. Here's their their marks for their different assignments, etc. And I've also got a cumulative total for all their assignments, which is quite good. But I can click on, for example, I can click on Juan there. And then when I do click on Juan, it will take me down and show me his um, uh, all his assignments, etc., at, at an individual student level. All right, so I can actually look there at, at, at everything that he's doing. I can see that he's got a lot of late assignments. He's got things missing. There's a whole heap of data in there that I can access. And then when I come back into my team, um, that's through that grade book, I could also go back and look at some of more of those, those insights through that insight tab there. All right, so that's what that looks like. That's the assignment feature. And that's a really cool thing that we can actually set up and be running inside our excuse me, inside um, our team. All right, so that's the assignment feature. I hope you got a lot out of that and I hope you're going to get in and start using that. But remember, we will have another assessment webinar coming up. 
let's talk about running our um, video. All right, so we, we want to present content to students, we want to record our session for later viewing, and we want to manage conversations and questions. So what happens inside Teams is at the moment, you have the ability to see four students at once or nine students at once, and the nine students has only just been announced. You are unable at this stage to be able to see everybody in your class at the same time, but you can see the three by three, that is nine. 250 students can come into the call at once, OK, so keep that in mind. Now I'm just going to show you really quickly because we're, I'm just looking at time and I've spent a lot of time talking about stuff and sort of um, I'm, a, I'm a little bit behind. So I'm just going to go really quickly about how to set up um, a video, a video chat to bring our students into. So I'm going to come back here. Let's do this one inside um, English. All right, so I'm actually going to schedule a call inside. Now what I could do is I could just come down here and click on this meet now button. If I click on the meet now button, I could start a video chat right now. OK. Oh, excuse me, I had to click allow there. All right, now you can see there I'm work from home. I've dressed up for you, um, but I could start a video right inside like that. The other thing I can do is I can schedule it by clicking on the calendar app over here. Again, I could meet now if I want, but instead I'm going to schedule a meeting, a lesson. So we're doing this inside. Oh, I forgot what I think we're in literacy. So let's make this an adjectives lesson. OK, we're going to set that for. Two o'clock in the afternoon um, till 2.30. Um, and we're going to make sure that is inside the literacy channel. So we come back down here to 6G put it inside the literacy channel and then I click send. Now all my students will get a notification saying that they have been invited to this adjectives lesson. So that will sit inside their calendar space as well. And I'm going to come back into my team. And you can see here now inside my literacy channel is this call ready for them to access. So what will happen is my students will actually click on that. They'll join it. I'm going to turn my video and audio off because I'm using it to actually present to you guys as well. Um, but if I come inside here, this is where I would see all my students. I would see my students um, as four by, uh, uh, two by two or three by three, so four or nine students. Um, and then I could, and all my other students will actually appear along the bottom down here. All right, so I can actually see everybody. Um, but I can only see nine of them in, in big form. All right, so I can turn on my video, turn on my microphone. Um, I can also start a video recording, right? So this, if, if my lesson was happening and I wanted everyone to have access to it later, I'd hit on that record button. The other thing I can do is I can show my device settings. So you may find that you, some of your students are going to say, I can't hear you, etc. So you can help them or teach them how to set up their speakers, their microphones and their cameras, etc. The other thing that I can do is I can look at who's in my meeting and I can change my students from um, attendees to presenters. So by making them into presenters means that they have the ability to share their screen um, and you know come off mute, etc. But if I leave them as attendees, um, then they don't have the control. They can't hijack my my uh, my lesson. All right. So um, the other thing that we that we want to be able to do is chat so we can actually chat with our students and they can chat with one another while that's happening as well. And then at the end of that, I can Stop my recording. OK, and now when I come out of my call. Yep, that call quality was fantastic. Thank you very much. Now when I come back into my team, you can see that my my adjective lesson is being saved into Microsoft Stream. So what that means is very soon that lesson will actually appear inside the chat so students can come into the literacy channel and they can access that that recording there. All right, let's keep moving. All right, so after our lesson, 
we want to be able to access the, the lesson recording. We want to view responses to the conversation. We want to continue to chat. So let's talk about what happens with Microsoft Stream. So when we when we record something, it automatically saves to Microsoft Stream, which we saw a moment ago it was starting to do that. In other words, it will automatically upload the video that you just made directly into the channel. It will create automatic closed captions and also a searchable transcript, which is pretty amazing. Um, Microsoft Stream is a 365 app that you can access through office.com um, as just one of your apps. It's free for education. You can have 500,000 total videos and you can also have uh, 50 gigabyte per video. All right, so I'm just going to show you what that looks like now. That probably has, oh, it's it's actually still um, still processing, but I'll show you one that's actually been done earlier. Um, I'll just need to find one that we had, forgive me. So we've got um, other lessons that we've recorded in the past will actually be would actually be sitting inside here. And apologies to you guys, it's not actually there. Um, but we'll just let that that load up. Soon, what will happen is that um, recording will actually be right there, and the students will be able to click on that, and they will be able to rewatch that lesson. All right. Um, you as a teacher can actually come into Microsoft Stream. Um, through those little ellipses there once it's ready and you can actually you can go in and you can edit that video and make changes etc and you have a, a, a large amount of control that the students won't actually have because you've created that video all right so that's what that that's what that looks like okay I've shown you the grade book which is really cool um, I think what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take us through the next step um, the next steps because I just want you to know where to go back to to get other information because we're coming up on the last few moments of our webinar. So again, aka.ms forward slash Microsoft Remote Learning is where you go to access a lot of information that we've made available to you. Another one is Microsoft Teams Answers. Oops, excuse me. Microsoft Teams Answers, support.microsoft.com forward slash education. There's some really good documentation on there. And also online courses for teachers are found at education.microsoft.com. So you can do um, uh, online courses at your, in your own at your own pace in your own time and they're recognized by the South Australian TRB. These recordings for these workshops are available for you at this link here aka.ms forward slash Caesar webinars. So please um, type that into your browser in a, in a couple of hours when this video is ready I will upload it for you into the um, uh, into that space and so you'll get the slides as well as the, um, the the video recording. Um, if you want to reach out to me, there, that's me. You can find me on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump back into the uh, Q and A, and let's see if Anna's got any questions for me before we wrap for the day. Yeah. <coughs> so we got this one from Anonymous. If you use the calendar for a meeting, will the meeting close after you complete it? Uh, good one. Yeah, good one. So what's just been announced is the ability to actually close the meeting. So um, that's just been announced. So in, in, in a short time, that's going to actually appear that when you have a video uh, meeting that you've scheduled, you'll be able to close that meeting. The students will all be ejected from that meeting and will not be able to rejoin. OK, so that's just been announced that feature. So keep an eye out. It should appear in your um, team's team's experience in the next couple of weeks. Any other Alrighty. questions? Yeah, so next one would be. Can that video you create be exported or uploaded to YouTube? Um, it could be because when you go into stream, um, stream as an app. Now let's let me just show you what I'm talking about. When I'm in my Microsoft Office start page, you can see stream lives here. If you can't find it, just click on all apps and it will appear. Um, when you come into stream, you can download your videos as an MP3, MP4 format and then you can do whatever you want with it, whether that's uploading it to YouTube or doing something else. But remembering you won't need to upload it to YouTube because the students have got access to it through stream as well, which operates very much like YouTube, but it's locked down and secure in your school space. Um, so you can see here that just like YouTube, I, I've got my content here. I can create channels, um, etc. Uh, Troy, Karen Sloan here. 
Yes, Karen. Uh, just an, on that too, um, be very aware that um, if you are putting something up on YouTube, that's completely public and um, you will have, uh, you may not see students' faces or whatever, but you will have names and information there. So um, you would need to be able to be very clear with your school uh, and CISA ICT um, uh, permissions, etc., before you put anything up on YouTube with students in it. Yeah, and and so that's why you would what why you would want to use Stream because Stream is locked down into your school's environment and it does everything or almost everything that YouTube does except you know it's secure and it's living inside the school space and only people with your school IDs, whether that's students or teachers, can access this content. Great one. Any other questions, Anna? Um, three more. Um. One is from Anonymous. Uh, how can you delete a team? It isn't allowing me to do this. I have clicked the delete button, but it has an error message. I'm trying to work out what kind of error message it is, but um, this person hasn't replied to me. I'm not too sure. Sure. So what I would suggest there, if you're having um, any sort of uh, error message like that, is reach out to your IT department directly at school or reach out to the CESA IT department and raise a ticket um, and look at getting that resolved. So you should just be able to delete the team um, and it should just vanish. Um, the other thing is sometimes, and I know this probably isn't a big help, but sometimes we just need to give it a little bit of time and then we come back and we see that it's actually been deleted. But nevertheless, raise a ticket with your IT people, either at your school or at CSER. All righty. Um, here's a great question. How did you present the slides in the background of this live learning? Oh, right. OK, good question. So I'm actually in a in a Microsoft Teams live event at the moment, but it's very similar that if I come into my channel here oh, and look, there we go. Our, our lesson is actually waiting for me here, which is really nice. Um, but if I start a meeting and forgive me for not sharing this with you, um, I seem to have forgotten, but when I go into one of my meetings, right, I'm going to turn my camera off. Um, when I, I've got a share button here, okay? So when I click on my share button, it gives me options. Do I want to share what's happening on my desktop? Do I want to share uh, PowerPoint presentations, etc.? And then it will actually present those up on the screen exactly like you've seen me do. As a matter of fact, it's more feature rich. That is, it's better in Teams meeting than, than it is in a Teams live event, which is where you are now. So you can share your screen. You can take the kids through and show them exactly what you're doing. You could even open up a Word document and start working on it and they can see exactly what you're doing. Perfect. So what we have left is, do students only see their assignments slash grades? Again, I'm trying to get a clarification on. Um, no, I think I know what she's asking, Anna. She's just asking, can student, students only see their own and not everybody else's? Definitely. Oh, gotcha. Students will only see their assignments and their, um, and their grades. But for me as a teacher, obviously, I can see the entire class. Sweet. So last question is the um, about the readiness. For the next webinar. Right, so probably the best person to reach out to for that would be um, Deb, Deb Kroger from from um, Caesar. Um, and so on that website where you actually signed up for for this, um, there's probably some contact information otherwise. Um, we'll try and post her email address into the chat now and maybe um, Karen if I can get you um, to to do that if you can see the Q&A there and you can pop Deb's email address for people to reach out to her about these webinars. Alrighty, so that will be it. That's it. OK, great. All right, guys. So as I said to you before, we will make these um, webinar recordings and other bits and pieces available to you. Oh, there goes there goes um, Siri. She's talking to me. So there it is there, aka.ms forward slash Caesar webinars. That's the recordings. And um, if you want to join our other um, webinars, we'll make sure that we publish that link in there as well. So thanks very much, everyone. And thanks to Anna and Karen for being here today. And I hope um, to see you at our next webinar soon. Thanks, uh, Troy and Anna.